So for my blog, I try to post weekly. Um, usually sometime on Thursday or the day before I plan to record, I start composing the post on my iPad. I start writing the post on my iPad um, with the content for the different podcast segments. So my podcast is themed around writing. So each of the segments I have on the show has a writing name. Um, so I have a segment called drafting, for example, where I talk about the projects I'm knitting, the projects that are in process. Um, in fully drafted, I talk about projects that I finished. In five favorite things, I talk about, um, it's not really knitting related, but I talk about things I've been enjoying for the week. Um, like maybe a new podcast I've been listening to or a different yarn I've bought or an, atten an event that I've attended um, or, you know, sometimes they're academic things. Sometimes they're books that I'm reading or things like that. So I spend the most time uh, for the podcast writing um, out the information for some of the segments that are later on in the show like Lit Review, where I review different books that I finished reading, iPad Musings, where I talk about different iPad apps related to knitting, Research, where I talk about whatever new knitting techniques I've learned or tried recently, and then Mortarboard Moment, um, where I talk about academic concepts that are related to podcasting or knitting or social media. Um, so the story I tell is that for a really long time I wanted to be on radio. Uh, when I lived in Florida, which was right after I graduated from college in 2000 to 2002 before I went to grad school. When I lived there, I listened to an independent radio station every day and a friend of mine and me, we decided, we pledged to the station so that we could uh, guest host a morning show and play our favorite music. And several people who listened to that radio show said I had a good radio voice. And I really enjoyed being on the radio, and I really enjoyed doing the show, so I kind of always wanted to do a radio show. But in grad school, I could never find the time. Surprise. <laughs> um, and I started listening to podcasts in grad school, and same thing. I wanted to start a podcast, but again, I could never find the time. So finally, after I graduated... After I finished, I found the time, sort of. Um, I'm finding year three on the tenure track has eaten a lot of the time that I used to record. But um, at least for the first year, I was able to record every week. So um, I found the time. I found video podcasting. And I felt like it made a lot of sense for knitting because people could actually see the projects I was working on and not just hear me talk about them. So it just clicked for me, it made sense, and I started uh, recording. Um, before I did that, I spent a lot of time watching other podcasts and seeing what people do on their podcasts. I came up with a theme that I felt like really suited me related to writing. Um, I researched different places to host the podcast and um, you know, like I, I made an image for the podcast and I researched iTunes and all these kinds of things. And once I had figured all the technical stuff out um, enough to get stuff up there, I recorded my first episode of the podcast and then I invited folks um, from other podcast groups on Ravelry that I belong to to join my group and then people did join and started watching. One thing my podcasts really help me do um, is write regularly. I try to write and record every week or so. Um, they also inspire me to knit. <laughs> Make sure I knit that week so that I actually have content for each episode. Um, and then people respond really positive, positively to the show. So that helps me stay connected to knitting. It helps me stay connected to the larger knitting community, which continues to encourage me to write and knit and post. And so it's kind of a cycle um, for me.